Hey everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe, and welcome back to the channel. This is R2, the jazz master that I've had the longest. And yes, it's named after R2-D2 from Star Wars. I've got a sticker on the back of the headstock, and I've got one of these super cool 1978 Star Wars fan club buttons on here. Now, I'm quite sentimental about this guitar, but whenever I post a photo of R2, or 3PO, or Vader, or Han, yes, I know, I have a lot of Star Wars themed guitars. The questions, they just keep rolling in and they're always focused on one very specific shared aspect of all of those guitars. Mike, where did you get those curvy arms? And no, they're not talking about my physique, but thank you for noticing. No, what they're actually talking about are the generously curved vibrato arms on all of my guitars. Now, if you're mainly familiar with Fender's current model offerings, you know, your American Vintage 2, your Pro 2, your J Mascus, etc., etc., then you may be used to seeing vibrato arms that are more or less straight. Kind of like me, watching a Luther marathon. Happy Pride. <laughs> But it didn't always used to be that way. In the past, these vibrato arms often had a little bit more going on in the shape department, whether it was the usual two bends found in the earliest jazz masters or the graceful bend of later period guitars like Jaguars. But as with all things vintage, some variation exists within the line and you can still find plenty of examples where the arms have absolutely no bend whatsoever. Now back in the day, many players looking for more usability and comfort bent the arms themselves into all sorts of contorted angles. If you look on reverb, you can find some really extreme bends going on. And that's the same thing that I've done to every vibrato arm in my collection. In fact, this was the first mod that I did to it. It wasn't a mastery bridge, it wasn't heavier strings, it wasn't new pickups. It was bending the hell out of this arm. But that raises the question, why even bend the arm in the first place? And to answer that, we'll need to go to the bench. All right, here we are at the workbench. I've got my lovely, very gently modified Johnny Marr Jaguar splayed out before me, ready for the arm to be bent, although it does have just a little bit of a curve in it already from the factory. That's commendable. Well done, Fender, if you're listening. Who are we kidding? You're probably not. But I really wanted to take a moment just to show you what I'm going for when I bend a vibrato arm like I do. What I want is for it to come straight out of the collet, snake around the bridge, and then I want the, the tip of the arm to pivot back inward toward the body so that it can meet my palm right in the area where I pluck. So yeah, this mastery arm is more or less what I'm going after when I bend an arm. Also note that this mastery arm is longer than the Fender uh, Johnny Marr arm. I do find a longer arm even more comfortable still uh, than I do the stock arm, but it's so close, it's probably not gonna make a huge difference. I also wanna say that when an arm is straight or only gently curved, I do find them a little bit more uncomfortable to work with. Almost like I can't actuate the vibrato in the way that I like while I'm strumming. So that added curve at the end really does help me. Now, if you're a big vibrato user like me and you're looking for more ease and playing comfort while manipulating the arm, then I'd like to show you my two most commonly used methods of bending it so that it sits right where I want it. Method number one. And look, I, I know that a lot of you are not gonna wanna hear this, but here it goes anyway. I just, I just bend them with my arm strength. Uh, I, look, I know that I'm a meaty guy. I know this isn't gonna work for everybody, but that's how I do it almost every time. Come on, bend it! So without further ado, let's see if I can bend this arm. And I'm just gonna put it in my hand. Oh yeah, that's, that's actually a lot easier to bend than I thought. I'm also gonna remove the tip so that I don't mar it. Pun intended. The end is usually the hardest part. So yeah, I'm gonna bend this. This might be a little bit more difficult to do. That's nice. So let's check against the mastery arm. And yeah, that's looking really good. The last thing I'm gonna do is put just a little bit more of a bend right at the tip here. And I'm gonna do that by throwing it in my vise. Yeah. How do we like that? Yeah, that's looking quite good. Put the tip back on. That's already so much more comfortable for me. Let me put it in playing position. Yeah, that feels a lot more natural to me. 
This is the method that I use on most USA made fenders as well as mastery and stay trim vibrato arms. However, I would not recommend using this method for your import guitars, your Squires, your MIJ and CIJ guitars, even your all parts vibrato. And the reason for that is that the arms on those are often made of a material that has a tendency to break instead of bend. I know this because I have broken a few over the years and so it pays to be cautious and that's why method two exists. This is one of those new Guild Surf liners with the vibrato, and I'm very excited to pull this off and see what makes it tick. However, the arm is kinda straight from the factory. Now, I haven't tried to bend this yet. I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to. This arm might have a tendency to break before it bends, so I'm gonna give it a shot here, but if, if this is too much for me to do with my uh, meaty arms, then we're gonna switch to method two. Oh, yeah, that's actually incredibly stiff. I don't think I'm going to be able to bend this with my strength alone. So for those arms, or for those of you who simply lack the muscular constitution to do it yourself, method two involves a heat gun. I'm just gonna say it, don't try this at home. If you choose to do this, understand that to do this, you are using a heat generating device that is blowing very hot air in whatever direction you're pointing it at. So make sure you're using this in a place with plenty of space around you and that you have a good place to put the heat gun to let it cool down somewhere that won't cause a fire. Be careful and for the love of God, don't burn yourself. Before you heat up the arm, make sure you remove the plastic tip so you don't melt it. Now for the safety of your guitar and its plastic components, I would recommend doing this with the arm uninstalled from the body and kept in a vise, which will act a bit like a heat sink. Then I would set the heat gun probably in the middle of its range. You don't need the very hottest setting, but you do wanna make sure that you're pumping out enough heat to make bending easier. Run the heat gun back and forth along the length of the arm that you're looking to bend. Also bear in mind that you don't need to make this super hot to encourage the metal to bend. In the case of this guild arm, I didn't even have to make it hot enough to potentially cause a burn. I just needed to warm it up enough to encourage the metal to bend. Once it was heated to my liking, all I did was stick the tip end of the arm in the vise. I didn't even tighten it down. And all I had to do was pull with some light to moderate force. All right, we've got the arm reinstalled and the tip very well secured and yeah. This is much more comfortable for me. And I want to point out that bending the arm may actually be an even bigger improvement on guitars that have an adjustomatic style bridge because these bridges are so tall that the tendency to hit the bridge or the saddles is much greater than with the standard style offset bridge or a mastery or a stay trim, et cetera, et cetera. So if you've got a model that has an adjustomatic, this might be a great thing for you to do if you've been finding that problematic. I've had great results with this method on every arm that I've tried it on, and to be sure, I haven't broken an import arm since I started using the heat gun. But again, be cautious if you're gonna use a heat gun in any capacity in guitar repair and modification. After that, all that's left is to play a test. Hopefully this video has armed you with a little bit more information that you can use to bring your guitar more in line with your needs as a player. As always, shout out to my supporters on Patreon and the folks on the Discord, the best little community that ever did exist. If you are interested in supporting the channel, there are links in the description down below. You know what? It's been a while since I've spent some good time with R2, so I'm gonna go do that. But before I go, let me say, I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other. I hope you're having fun with the guitars. I hope you're being careful with heat guns, and I will see you in the next video.